Hey guys, my name is Frank and this is the Poth on Programming video log and today I'm going to be showing you guys how to install a progressive web app. I, I've already made a tutorial on how to do this, but this is a little bit different because this one is going to run in offline mode and it's going to fully install to both home screen and the app drawer on Android devices. So it's a little bit different. So the first thing I'm going to do, well, obviously the first thing I have to do is go to my secure HTTPS served GitHub pages site so I could actually get this content. I'm going to go into my settings and then my site settings and finally my storage in Chrome browser for Android and I'm going to clear my site storage. That's going to remove any previous versions of this that I was testing. It's going to remove the caching. It's going to remove the service worker that I have registered. The service worker is responsible for caching pages so I can run this in offline mode. And then I'm going to refresh the page and it's going to allow me to install the latest version of my web app that I just uploaded. So I'm going to come in here to the side menu and I'm going to hit add to home screen. Now, as you can see at the bottom, I have this install to home screen banner pop up and it's a little bit different than the last tutorial where you saw the banner in the center here because this is actually going to fully install my app to Android with an intent filter and everything. So now when I open it, as you can see, I had the splash screen and now I have my full screen web app experience and when I close this it's going to pop up on my home screen right there and I can click it and access it shows the splash screen shows my content I still have that white flash in between I'm not really sure how to get rid of that I think it has something to do with rendering of the content and if I come in here in my app drawer you can see I also have the app installed in my app drawer right there web app and furthermore, if I come up here to my site settings, not site settings, thinking of Chrome browser, if I come up here to my Android settings and I go to apps, I believe if I go all the way down to the bottom, yup, there it is, web app. And I can click it and it's treated just like a regular app on my Android device, even though it's just a progressive web app. It's really just a web page. Kind of works like a bookmark, but this is awesome because... I just installed my web page to an Android device and it can run offline on my phone whenever I want it. So to show you guys that's the case, I'm going to come up here. I'm going to disconnect from my Wi-Fi. Actually, I'm going to turn on airplane mode to really, really prove to you guys that this is going to run in offline mode. I'm going to come over here. I'm going to close out all open instances of my program and I am going to start this baby up and see what happens. And as expected, we have an offline Android web app. So it's really simple. It doesn't do anything. But imagine if you had an HTML5 game that you wanted people to play on their phone. You can now play that in a full screen web view, Chrome web view. I believe it works on Firefox as well. Maybe not. I'm not. Don't take my word on that. It works in Chrome on Android. That's where I tested it. This is what you're seeing working here. And now I'm going to switch over to my computer and show you guys the code that I use to get all this to work. So stay tuned for that. Alrighty, so now I'm on my computer and I'm going to show you the code that went into making this offline Android web app. So this is my HTML page. Really simple, really simple HTML page. The only thing you have to do to make this web page into an offline web app or just a web app is include a link tag to your manifest file. I went over this in the last tutorial. And to make it an offline web app or a app that uses cached pages, we're going to have to register a service worker. So this line right here is the most important part of this block of code in the script tag here. You just tell the navigator to register your service worker. So you say navigator.serviceworker.register, and then you hand a path to your service worker file. Mine is just in my root directory, so I just say dot slash to, to set the path to the root directory and then the name of my file. You also have the option to give your service worker a scope. So say you only want your service worker to be functional for a certain scope, so for some certain files in a subdirectory, you can include a subdirectory here. Um, I just want it to be over everything in my root directory, which is right here. So I have all my files in my root directory, so I just specify the root directory. But you don't even need this. Uh, I think it actually defaults to the root directory, but 
Don't take my word on it. Go out there and research it for yourself. The other thing you can do here is use promises to handle success and error um, events here. In the case that it is successful and you register your service worker, you're going to just add a callback with the registration parameter, and you can do something with that here. Just say console.log registration. You can do that. Um, I just got done testing all this out, so I didn't really polish up this code before I started making this tutorial, but I didn't include a success response. I did, however, include an error response, so if for some reason your service worker doesn't register, you're going to throw, well, you're not going to throw anything, but you're going to alert the user to this error message that says, could not register service worker, this application will not be able to run in offline mode, blah, 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 whatever you want to tell them, and then you can also say, hey, here's the error. So this actually helped me out a little bit because I was trying to access my content through HTTP rather than HTTPS. And I was like, why isn't it working? I didn't catch that. I didn't have that S on there. And when I threw this error message in here, it was like, hey, you have to be on HTTPS. So I was like, pretty cool. So if you're not forwarding your HTTP request for your site to HTTPS, it would be a good idea to add this error message in here just to tell users, hey, you can't install your this progressive web app unless you're using HTTPS. Another good thing to take note of is the application tab in your dev tools. This is going to come in really, really handy for testing out your, your web app. So basically, if you go to the application tab, you have access to these three overviews here. You got your manifest overview, and you could click here and see your manifest file, the contents of the manifest file. So you could check to see if it's the most recent one, just in case the cache is old. You can see your registered service workers. Right now, mine is throwing an error, but don't worry about that. It works. You're always going to get an error when you run in offline mode. And clear storage. This will allow you to clear your caches. It'll allow you to unregister your service workers so you can get the freshest, most up-to-date version of your code when you're testing because it's hard to test with caches because you're caching old files, and when you write new versions and you try to update, if you don't uncache that stuff, you don't delete that from the cache, you're going to end up serving those old files and you're going to be like, didn't I try to fix this and now it's not working? So make sure you just clear everything and then refresh your page. Oh, failed to register service worker. Why? See, now this is a good use case here for application. Let's see what the details are here. Service worker script evaluation failed. Well, there's a problem with my service worker now. I must have done something here. Yep, I forgot to add a comma, so I'm going to throw that comma back in there. That was the fastest I've ever diagnosed a problem. kind of glad because I'm making this video. I didn't want to waste too much time doing that. I was like, oh, man, do I have to restart this whole thing? But now if I come in here, hopefully that's the only error in my service worker code. Come down there, clear everything out, and then refresh. Look at that. Everything works just fine. I have no errors. I can come over here to my service workers. I'm going to clear all this. I'm going to unregister. And I'm going to restart. I'm going to register my newly updated service worker. And it's activated and it's running fine. I got the green light. Everything works great. If I want to go test to see if it works offline, I just click this offline checkbox and refresh. And as you can see, I got some errors popping up. But page actually loaded everything from the cache and everything works just fine. So if I come down here to my details, I can see that, or if I go to my console, oh, actually, I guess I can just go to my details of my application tab. There we go. It'll just say an unknown error occurred when fetching the script. This is totally fine. This just means you're offline, basically. You're, you tried to fetch a script that you didn't cache, and because you're offline, you couldn't access the server to serve it to you. So you're always going to get some kind of error like this unless you just cache the crap out of everything. And you don't need to. So it's just an error message. It's not going to hurt you. If you have other error messages that are a little more, you know, error-y, then that could be a problem. But this one is not going to bother you too much. So now I'm going to take a look at the actual service worker code. I'm going to slide this back over here. Take a look at this actual service worker code and show you the main two event handlers. I have an activate event handler, but I'm not actually doing anything with it. I'm pretty sure I don't even need this in here to make this run properly. 
But basically what Activate does is if you have newer versions of your cached files and you upload that to your website and people try to download, people revisit your web app online, you can refresh your cache with the Activate function because whenever you're, they visit, your service worker reactivates and it can check on your cache and you could say, okay, I got new files that I uploaded to the site. They don't match with the files that the user has on their phone because they downloaded an older version and we can actually update those. So this is really handy, but I didn't put any of that code in here, but just know that you can use that to do this. Go check out some online documentation because I'm not going to cover that. The main things I am going to cover are the install and fetch event handlers. So I add my listeners for install and fetch. I'm going to go over install first, add my listener for install, and I have my handler. I'm going to say when the event fires, wait until I can open this cache, and you can name this anything you want. I name mine web app. It's just going to create a cache in your, your uh, browser cache called web app. And if it's successful, you're going to have a callback function with a cache parameter. I guess you can name that whatever you want to. I just name mine cache because that's what it represents. And I'm going to return a cache after I add all of these files to it. So this basically tells me to cache the server response if I just access my my plain old HTTPS www.mysite.com that's going to register the response for that. It's going to register the server response for my manifest.json file, even though you don't need to have this in here. I could get rid of this and it would work just fine. It would put up an error message though when I run offline mode because it wouldn't be able to access that. Um, and then all the files you need. So this is great for a game because if you want your game to run in offline mode, now you can do that. You can put your sprite sheets in here. You could put your, your JavaScript logic in here. You can put your HTML in here that has all your elements and your CSS. Everything you need to run your game, you could throw in here all the files and you'll have access to them offline. So the next thing is the fetch event handler. So say after I install, I'm going to talk about my CSS. So say I, I run this for the first time on my phone or something. It registers my service worker. Um, an install event fires. It registers all these files into my cache, saves them all into my cache. And now I'm accessing this stuff again at a later time in offline mode, perhaps, or online mode. Either way, it's going to get it from the cache with the code I wrote in my fetch event handler. And I'm trying to get access to my web app.css. So when a fetch event fires, I'm going to say event.respond with caches, caches.match. And what this is going to do is it's going to look inside my caches for a matching URL. So say my page is requesting the CSS, the web app.css right here. It's going to say caches.match. So do I have in my cache? the web app.css file or the request, the event.request. If I do, then return the success callback function, which has this response parameter. And it's basically going to return the file content of my web app.css. And if it's OK, here, I check to see if it's a good response. And if it is, I return that response, goes to my client, and it parses it. So that's a really simple way to handle getting stuff out of your cache in online or offline mode. This does not, however, handle getting stuff from online. So once this particular code runs, this particular service worker, once it installs and caches everything, it's not going to try to access stuff from online anymore. It's only going to get stuff from my offline cache with this. So basically, this service worker just sits between my client side and my server. And whenever the client makes a request to the server, this web service steps in and it says, hey, wait, we're only going to give you stuff from the cache. So if it doesn't match the cache request, we're just going to ignore it. And if it does, great, we're going to give it to you from the cache and it's going to load really fast and everything's going to be great. So this works really well for an HTML5 game where you're not trying to update all the time from your actual website. You just want users to install it once and be able to play the game. Um, if you want to update stuff, definitely look into the activate event handler and stuff you can do with that to provide updates to your game. But if you're not trying to update every time you don't have a lot of dynamic content, you really don't need to be making requests to the server all that much. And for a game, it's good to just get stuff from the cache because it's really fast. 
So anyway, I guess I can go over my manifest too, but anyway, that's basically the service worker code right there. And it works great, and that's all you really need if you want to make an HTML5 game. Again, if you're using a lot of dynamic content, you're going to want to have online access too, so you're going to want to change that fetch function a little bit. But there's plenty of online documentation for that, so go check that out. This is my manifest file. It's basically the same as in the last example that I gave you guys on how to just create a bookmark on your home screen with install to home screen or add to home screen. This is going to give you the full add to home screen effect where you install to home screen, you get an app icon on your home screen, and it installs to your app drawer and your actual apps in your Android settings. The only thing I really change here, though, is I add the scope parameter here, the scope attribute. And I just say I'm going to set the scope of my manifest to cover everything in my root directory with that dot slash again. So if I'm trying to serve a progressive web app from another directory outside of my manifest scope, it's not going to open it in app mode. So let's say that I have my web app.html start page here, my start URL, and I create another folder called subcontent and I put a bunch of content in there too and I set the scope of my app manifest to that content folder it's no longer going to open this page from the home screen in uh, full screen mode like I have specified in my app manifest because the manifest is only applied to files that fall within its scope. So I just set it to the root directory. You don't even have to include this in here. I think it just defaults to the root directory, but I put it in there anyway just to show you guys in case you want to narrow that scope down a bit. So this is everything you need to create that offline web app experience from the HTML registering the service worker to the service worker itself to how to use the application tab of the dev tools and to finally the manifest file. You can use this stuff to create a really cool experience for your end users and install your app or your game or whatever to their home screen and have them play it in offline mode. One thing I do want to add is that if you're going to use the test server that I showed you guys how to build with Node.js to do this, you're not going to be able to get your web app to use the manifest. So your web app is not going to launch in full screen when you install it from this, from your local host. Not your local host, but your local server through your router. This was really frustrating to me, and I could not figure out what the problem was. I, I posted on Stack Overflow. I, I didn't really get an answer, but I think it has something to do with the web standards needed to install progressive web apps and have the manifest work when you launch them. However, when I install to home screen from my local IP address here from my server, it does work in offline mode. Everything works. The only thing that doesn't happen is it doesn't launch in app mode. So everything still works just like it would on, like it should, and the service worker still works. It just doesn't launch in full screen mode and doesn't have a splash screen and none of that extra cool stuff that makes it feel native happens. So I suggest to get around this, and what I did to get around this was I just uploaded it to my website, my GitHub Pages site. So if you have another hosting platform, and that's what you're going to need anyway to get this out, uh, just upload it to there. GitHub is a great choice. So I think it really has to do with the standards, and I think the standards for progressive web apps require you to use HTTPS, which I am using, and it probably also requires you to have a fully qualified domain name rather than just a local IP address and a port number. So unfortunately, I think that's the problem. If you know otherwise, please hit me up in the comments below and tell me what I'm doing wrong here because I would absolutely love to be able to install this from my local server. So, But anyway, that's it. I think that's as much as I can tell you guys about this, and that's really as much as I know. I don't know a lot about this. I'm just testing it out for the first time myself, and I figured I'd make a video to show you guys how to do this stuff because I think it's really, really awesome that we can finally have full screen apps on our phones that just run using HTML5 and CSS and some JavaScript. I think it's really cool. So anyway, if you guys learned something, like the video, comment away, subscribe to my channel. I'm having more videos coming real soon, more game designy stuff. And that's it. Have a great day. Mm -hmm.